Now, this next step is needed because after you've cloned the VM, while the contents are the same, if there's more than one Solaire on the network, they each need to be unique. And unique translates to IP addresses, names, MAC addresses, and stuff like that. Now, this extra step is unnecessary if you're just going to deploy one Solera SIM that you're going to use for shared storage to try out cool VMware features or do uh, any sort of play around and testing. But if you ever want to replicate it, this step is very, very important. So let's see how you do it step by step. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to um, quickly take a look at this uh, uh, the steps. We're going to change the host name correct the fact that the Macs have changed. And while this isn't complex, this is a little bit tricky, so you'll need to follow closely. Let's open up the Solera SIM and log in. Now, changing the host name requires, once again, that we're going to log in with the root credentials. So let's log in with root NAS admin. And you'll notice that it's currently the host is named localhost. Um, we're going to need to change that to be something that we're, is going to be unique. So the first thing that we're going to do is some basic uh, configuration steps. This directory of Blackbird tools, Blackbird is the code name of the Solera contain all these very specific tools that you only use with the Solera. This particular command in its storage ID will just make sure that the Solera simulator serial number is regenerated from the UUID of the VM. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to change the local host file. So to give it a specific name, the domain name needs to conform to the standard. And if you're not a VI expert, either look it up on the internet or you can just hit A to append, uh, hit escape to move back to uh, control mode and uh, W and Q in control mode to write and quit respectively. Now here you can see that all I did was put in the IP address of the control station, gave it its name csprod, its fully qualified domain name uh, csprod.esxdomain.local in my case. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to modify uh, the network configurations that are run every time the Solera starts so that it'll always come up with this proper new host name. So just by appending it to the network file that's stored in sysconfig, so once again I hit A there, I then type in what I want to add, domain name equals the domain name, so this will be whatever domain name you want to use, and then host name, again in my example I chose csprod for production, but you can um, use whatever you'd like. Then what I did is hit escape, I hit uh, W for write, and then I hit Q to quit. Now, just for fun, this step isn't necessary, because if you just rebooted it, the host name would change. But I'm just going to change it immediately here. Ch type hostname csprod, and we've changed the host name. You'll notice that if you log in now, the host is now called csprod, not localhost. Now let's log in with NAS admin, NAS admin for some subsequent tasks. Now this step requires a little bit of explanation. When you create a VM and deploy it from a template, it changes the MAC addresses of the VNIX, the virtual interfaces. Now within the Solera, a service is running called the Blackbird service that represents the data mover in the architecture. That Blackbird service stores certain system configuration in something um, um, that's called the NAS database. And it's storing the MAC addresses of the pre-cloned configuration. So the, we need to change that so that it reflects the new current MAC addresses. So let's see how we do that. OK. Now, if I go back again to this opt Blackbird tools directory, and by the way, just one quick thing. If you get a note that says that the NAS service is not yet started, just log out, wait for a few minutes, and then come back and the NAS service will start. In fact, that's what the message says. So what we're now going to do is we're going to do another command. This is how you change the virtual CGE, which stands for Copper Gigabit Ethernet Interfaces, that are used by the Blackbird SIM. Now note both CGE0 and CGE1 are currently configured, and they both map to the VNIC ETH0. 
Now, what we're going to do is we're going to delete them and then re-add them. But during that process of re-adding them, you can also change whatever ETH port they're mapped to. So, for example, in my case, I'm going to change it so one of them is connected to the uh, uh, LAN V switch and one is connected to the iSCSI V switch. Again, this step needs to change for however your particular network is configured, uh, but it's fairly simple and straightforward. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to type in this com command configure nic server2 basically stands for data mover2 dash delete for delete and then the, we specify the interface that we're deleting. So you'll notice now that only CG1 is left. I hit tab to you know change that next command for CGE1 and boom those are all gone. Now what we're going to do is just make those changes uh, you know export into the NAS database. By the way, that L command just does a list. So I'm just highlighting that there's no configure there's no configured uh, copper gigabit Ethernet interfaces in this right now. By the way, you can visualize the, this whole step as um, as uh, uh, you know effectively cabling up the Solera simulator. Now, just by the way. You'll notice that I typed in this command export NAS DB equals NAS, and then what I did is I typed in SU for if you're not a Linux person or a Unix person, SU basically promotes your user to the super user or root account. So you just need to type in the password, which is NAS admin, and then reboot. The reason that you just need to do this is that the NAS admin user can't reboot the VM. So you'll notice that the VM is rebooting. Let's time warp a little bit, and then let's log back in. What we're going to do now is we're going to re-add the CGE ports and map them to the ones that we're actually using. This step will also make sure that they have the MAC addresses that correspond with this particular VM. So once again, log in uh, as NAS admin, NAS admin, navigate to the Blackbird tools directory, and do the configure nick server2 command once again. But now what we're going to do is we're going to say add. So I did a list. You can see there none of them are there. I'm now specifying the first interface is going to go to ETH0. Now in the next example I want CGE1 to go to ETH1 which is my iSCSI vSwitch. Let's make sure that those uh, changes take effect. So again export NAS DB equals dash NAS. Then super user again to reboot. So type in the password for the root admin reboot dash n dash n stands for now and boom the VMs all start to reboot. Let's time warp again. By the way you'll notice that it's stopping the NAS service and then stopping the Blackbird service. If you take a look at the blog earlier I kind of explained that the Blackbird service is the data mover.